for right now, uh, things are a little bit tighter with the owner. Money-wise, he bought some other trucks and and things like that. And he's trying to get some other uh, things going in his business, which I understand. So I'm trying to do the best I can for him to save him a little money. He had a he had an RTLO 16913 A box, which is that transmission right there in the back of the service truck, and he doesn't. The 18 speed's great transmission. The 18 speed, the difference between the 18 speed and the 9 speed is some air plumbing, and the bearing bores are a little bigger. Okay, so that's the difference. They'll accept this. This transmission basically is in uh, pointing at the wrong one. The RTLO 16913A. So that's a Road Ranger twin counter shaft low inertia overdrive. 16 means it's it's rated for 1600 foot pounds of torque. And it's a nine, which means a new seal design, and 13 Ford speed Ford speeds on it. But we're gonna make it an 18 speed, and it's really simple to do, guys. It's just some air plumbing, and put the shift knob back on. So we'll we'll show you when we get there. But we're gonna disassemble this one. This one here was out of one of his other trucks I pulled out a couple years ago, and it was laying at my house, and it's just got a couple teeth knocked off one gear, and it didn't damage everything like it did on this one. So we're just gonna we're just gonna rebuild this one and stick that one back in there. It's just a way way better situation and it's gonna be quicker. Basically, all we need is a couple gears and a bearing kit, and we'll get the two halves for the high low synchro. Maybe some shift sliding shift uh, collars, but it's not very bad at all. It's really it's it's in way better shape. This one here, we're gonna have to change like six or eight gears on it, you know, and and it's just gonna be input shaft and and everything else is kind of foobarred on it. So. This one's going to put on the, be put on the back burner for now, and we're going to we're going to use this one here. So that's the game plan. Okay, just a couple of things that I see right off the bat. That bell housing will not work on this application. So which that one there will bolt right onto this main case, and then this yoke is a strap tie style. The other yoke is cap and cap. If you don't know what that means. It takes a strap with those 12 inch, 12 point half inch bolts that holds the U joint into the yoke. As where these are caps all the way around. That's what we call a full round. This one has what they call a full round cap U joint style. Um, I don't know how else to explain it. It takes caps all, all, on all four points there on the cross. The other one has straps there and caps on the other side. It's a half round. So that yoke there will go on to that transmission. That's not a problem either. I need to get my straps off of here, off this auxiliary section. And what we'll do right now, I found my hook. I couldn't, I used to do a lot of this kind of stuff years ago and I had all this stuff all situated and lined out and everything. And then I kind of got it scattered and lost some of it and finally starting to find it all. I like doing these, I really do. They're really kind of easy. And I don't know why guys are so scared to rebuild them. They really don't take that long, and if you can get the parts in a timely manner, they're pretty damn easy to do. Uh, they're a hell of a lot easier doing an automatic, to me anyway. But anyhow, I'll quit blathering. So let's, uh, I guess the first thing is uh, let's do what we did yesterday. Let's, what I'm going to have to do is get the, shit bar housing off of it right quick and well let's just take the let's just take this off real quick get two gears maybe out that ain't gonna happen either really I'm trying to think I guess I'll rip the shit bar housing off This one here just had a couple uh, this one here just had overdrive 
overdrive was screwed up on it. It had a couple teeth missing there. And I think it got, got this counter shaft gear a little bit. How about this other counter shaft? So it needs three gears changed. I can see a part of the tooth falling on this counter shaft. Other than that, everything looks pretty good. This one's a way better shape than that other one was. Way better shape. choker around that yoke.
let's get the uh, air hammer. Same song and dance as yesterday. You get to see a 13 speed and an 18 speed for now. It's really ain't much difference in them, really. give up on anything. I run them till they don't go no more. Gonna do there. I'm gonna show you pulling the slave valve off and uh, I'm gonna do for now just for time's sake. I'm gonna just loop it up there. Yeah. Yeah, usually those pop out of there a little bit easier than that. shop let's go see if we can find that <laughs> uh. Let's go over here and rip our straps off this other one see if it completely falls apart on the pallet. We need that yoke. But all that stuff will be right here. It ain't going nowhere. transmission with this transmission and I gotta see if the speed sensor that's another thing is the speed sensor the same there isn't too much that's gonna be different one thing about the eating stuff and the truck stuff a lot of the stuff's interchangeable you know versus the automotive stuff you know like these pickups I mean there's just hardly any so when you lift these auxiliary sections off don't be alarmed if your your splitter sliding clutch falls out no big deal it happens all the time these slide back in there but 
this one here is a heck of a lot better shape. This is gonna be a lot better transmission to rebuild here. Okay guys, got the bell housing off. This is almost an identical transmission as far as disassembly goes on it as the one we did yesterday. This is your little pump tube here. Battery must be getting weak in it. Yeah, I gotta get battery changed. All right, guys. So the next thing we're gonna do is pull this reverse idler out. Okay, and then we'll pull that out of there. Pull the shaft out, basically, and I'm just gonna go that direction with it. Well, what did I do last time? I pushed it that way a little bit. To, uh, I don't know. Let's see what we... I'm trying to remember. I had a light here somewhere. I can have this whole thing disassembled in about an hour and a half. And... There's my lights charging on the dash here. i got to get my butt down there and get that dresser dozer back together. But I'm waiting on the gasket for it too. That TD25E. That's been kind of on my mind. So let's, let's see here. Let's get our light right in there. And what I can do is kind of tap that shaft that direction, get that snap ring off, and then we can shove that shaft out that direction. Uh, I did that with a pick. always on the bottom where you can't get to them where you can't see them why does that seem like that's always the way that that goes let me see if I can tap it this way and move the snap ring around maybe yeah Kind of being ornery. Tell these guys they put things together and they don't ever think about at the factory or whatever. They never think about taking them back apart. Huh. Okay. There, I finally found an edge where I can get it twisted. Or maybe I can... Find the end of it, maybe, and yeah, I see, I see. This is one of those spiral snap rings. More than one tool here. Usually I'll work these bearings out where I can get this snap ring off and I'll get a couple bars and work this bearing off, but this one's already out, fortunately. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and try to get that snap ring off of there. While it's out there in a convenient spot. Oops. Come on, 
with. Ah, this look out. Okay, never mind. I don't really need to even do that, huh? Usually those don't come out of there that easy. But... It's gonna give it to me. I'm gonna take it. If it's gonna give it to me, I'm gonna take it. Get lucky enough and get that other one out of there like that. Probably not. Never seem to get that fortunate. But. All right, so we'll pull the snap rings off the back. situation here for you down there. Don't you love snap rings? It can be so entertaining. Okay. Got them both off of there. Okay, what we'll do now is shove these bearings out the back to get a punch. Ow! My air hammer might work in here, just gotta be careful. Carried about knocking the rollers out. We're not using these bearings anyhow, so didn't really think it was going to come apart like that. But oh, that one really decided to come apart, huh? one here. I'm going to show you something else that I have done in the past to make things a little bit simpler and easier on me is that fellow's by himself there it seems to work a little bit better. These counter shafts always want to sag and get in the way. plate here is kind of convenient to pull off. Got some wire here and what I do is wire that sucker up out of the way. When I pull the input shaft it's a hell of a lot easier. Go into this hole right here. Let 
me find my damn Leatherman. I don't know. I need that right now. See if we can get this wonderful snap ring off of here. Coming off a little better than that one did yesterday. That's way better than yesterday. Usually drive gear, slide it off. Okay, and then this slide off too, if it'll come off. It's not wanting to come off though. Container on the back is different than that 18 speed. Bearings are a little bit smaller. It's quite a bit different retainer. This transmission's in way better shape though, I'll tell you that. So now what we want to do here now is uh, if I get that snap ring off there or not. Okay, so just take your where your where your sliding clutch collar is between your direct gear and just take a bar and stick in there and shove it back and that'll shove this whole shaft back and shove the bearing out the bore where you can get your heel bars in there behind uh, on that snap ring like so and work that bearing out of there Just like so okay We'll stack all this stuff up the way it come out of there. Just like that. That'll go. Let me put this back over that. Like so, with all the bolts in it. I'm missing a bolt somewhere. Bolt. I don't know what happened. Missing one bolt. Alright, so now what a guy needs to do there is pop this one snap ring out 
right here is holding the low reverse gear on slide that slide that gear forward it's an internal snap ring that's a pretty simple task usually things go right Washer back in there behind it too. Come on, let me get a driver. This one's probably too big. Slide this that washer will come out of there too, so I'll go grab it and try to get this gear to slide forward. Okay. You gotta remember too, when you're going back together with these things, see you've got a beveled side on this washer and a flat side, so read the book. And I'm pretty certain the flat side went against this flat part of this spacer here. So, okay. So now, I don't know. Sometimes I have to knock the lower bearings out. They're still such a pain in the butt. Most of the time, you can, you can, uh, I can get this one. Maybe you can see it a little bit better, but I don't know. I'm going to slide this whole input shaft back out of the pocket of the in or the main shaft back out of the pocket of the input shaft I should say and they make a hook but you know what I'm gonna do I got this wire right here wire around this shaft right here and use it maybe maybe it'll be a little bit easier on me tie a twist in her up here and I gotta knock the other bearings out down here on this counter shaft. So that's easy to do now that we've got the main shaft out of the way. Counter 
shaft is loose. Super idler. Get both the bush washers off. I forgot to pull the snap ring off, darn it. Pull the snap ring off the input shaft here. Forgot about that. Yeah. 